Hey everybody and welcome back to the Hobby Dude 007 channel. For some time I have mentioned that I decant many of my spray paints and I've received in the comment section as well as a number of emails that ask two questions. First of all, why do you do that? Secondly, how do you do it? Well today we're going to look at the answer to those. Stick around, we'll take a look. There are a number of videos on YouTube that are tutorials on how to decamp paint. And I've watched a good many of them just to see if there's something new. There was three of the techniques that I have tried and they all really work, but there's one that worked better for me. And I'm gonna share that with you. And I'll share with you too the other two techniques. But first of all, let's take a look at the answer to that first question. And that is, why would you wanna decant? Well. When you're spraying, it's hard to control. Now you can back off a little bit and get a little distance and control how much paint and stuff down, but as far as the amount of paint and amount of air that come out, you have no control over that when you push that button. And uh, therefore, you can get some runs when you're trying to get into nooks and crannies, but don't get me wrong, I've got runs with my airbrush too sometimes when I'm a little careless, so it's just a practice thing. I like to decant it, and I think my main reason is I like to put those ultra-thin coats on there. Multiple ultra-thin coats, at least for me, seem to yield a much, much better finish. The, but the biggest reason is <laughs> I'm cheap, and there's a lot of waste. You ever noticed all that overspray and then when you're spraying down something? And I do use rattle cans. I use them uh, when I'm doing chassis, sometimes entire bodies. I'll do the spray cans and uh, get a great result. But you have large flat surfaces and, and it's easier to do. But when you get those nooks and crannies, I like to control it with the airbrush as far as how little paint and I can build that up. But you have very, very, very little waste you'll find that if you decant it, where sometimes you may use a th maybe a third to a, a quarter of the can, maybe even half the can on a paint job, if you decant this, run it through your airbrush, you'll find that you're using considerably less than a quarter sometimes. It, it's amazing. The other thing is, if you use some methods and pour all the paint into a container, that stuff will go, it can harden up a little faster on you, whereas you use what you need, leave the rest in the can to decant later. A whole lot easier to store it that way. But that's the reason I like to do it. The biggest reason is it, it saves, it really cuts down on the waste, and you have better control when you're using your airbrush with it. Now, let's get into decanting. Hey guys, up front, let me tell you, no matter which technique you use, always, always, always use good ventilation. Wear your respirator. I wear my mask as well as I decant in my spray booth. Uh, don't want to take any chances. The first technique for decanting paint is just using the instructions on the can to clear out the nozzle. And that is, you know how uh, the instructions always say to invert the can upside down and spray until just the clear comes out or the, the propellant. And you can continue there until all the propellant is gone or you have no more sound or, or air coming out. And again, use caution and you can, uh, some people will cut the entire top off and pour the paint out. Um, some will uh, just knock a couple of holes in the bottom to pour it out. So there's, there's different techniques for getting it out, but that's one way is to evacuate that. And of course you need to do that outside. And the other way is big time. If you're going to do this technique, do not, do not, do not shake the can up. Leave it alone. These cans are designed from the nozzle going down. There's a tube that reaches almost to the bottom of the can. And when the can is sitting straight up, you've got about two thirds of it, which are paint and the rest of it is the propellant or the aerosol that blows it out. So you don't want that mixed. You want that separated. So you're gonna to wanna to let that sit, make sure it's, it's separated where the paint is on the bottom, the propellant's on the top. Then you'll wanna to take and 
poke a hole or punch a hole right up here, um, not on the bottom where the paint is, obviously, but where the propellant is, and that hissing will start. And when the propellant is gone, um, you can, from that point, just cut the top off. You can cut most of it off and then make a little spout and then just pour that right out. Um, and, and that works. I, I've done both of these techniques, like I said, but the easiest one for me is the straw technique. And what you're going to need there is get you some tape, um, a bottle to put it in. I've got a number of these to me, uh, uh, paint mix bottles. I also use a lot of, and I think I'll use this today, is just uh, an old medicine bottle. I've collected these from friends and other uh, around, and I like to mix them in this stuff too. And uh, just make sure the childproof side seals up pretty good, but I like to invert that where it's just seals. I can screw it down and seal it on really tight. Um, and we're going to get our straw. Now, these straws are the, the bendy ones. And you can get these at Dollar Tree, Walmart, a hundred of them. Um, and they're a dollar. So no big deal. I also like to use the 3M tape and Silly Putty. And I've used the Silly Putty for years. Same two things. And I think this stuff's only a dollar. Um, but first thing we want to do is we'll take our tape and we're going to seal off I'm, well while I got the lid off of this one I'll just use it we're going to seal off the top of the bottle and I usually do this a couple of directions That's good right there. And then I take my X-Acto and I put just a small slit right there. Make sure ahead of time the straw fits. Now what I'm going to do, since I'm going to do some testers paint. So I'm going to be using a shorter can. So I'm going to cut this right about there. And I'm going to attach this to the spray can and I left it on the dehydrator by the way that's the other things you always 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 want to warm that paint up first so I'll stick around I'm here for a second let me run over here and grab the paint I'll be right back in a second all right some nice toasty paint here now there's a couple of ways as I said we can do this we can take the silly putty and you can see some of the discolorizations from me doing this before and you can wrap this around the straw just a little, put it on to the nozzle, and then just pack it around. Uh, so you can see what I'm doing a little better. I'm not going to use this, uh, the Silly Putty this time. I'm going to use it, uh, uh, the tape. Now, I do use the Silly Putty all the time on this type nozzle. And you do have different types of nozzles. You notice that oval kind of shape there. And the straw will fit very easily on that. But to hold that steadier, I like to use the Silly Putty on that. The uh, Tamiya ends, you see how this is uh, kind of raised out a little bit. And the straw just goes boom right over that. And you can tape that on there, kind of like I'm going to do here. And But what we're going to do is we're going to take our tape. And the first thing I do is line it up with a nozzle. And, well, I didn't do this first. I kind of wrap this around this way first. Oops. And then that goes right up in there. Boom. As you see, that goes right up in there. And then I just kind of wrap it around. And then I'll do one across the top. And this is one of those things where you just play with it, and, and you you may come up with your own technique, but there you go. That's done. And I can still shake that up and however I want to do it, but it's very securely on there. Uh, not going to get any leakage, hopefully. And we've got our bottle ready. Now all we have to do is just run this in and then just start spraying. 
and I'm going to go on over to the paint booth now and do that and because I'm going to have the uh, the air or the exhaust on for the paint booth and I'll be wearing a respirator so if I do say anything you're probably not going to hear it so uh, stick around let's go paint All right, guys, let's get it done. Let me get this off. Okay, guys. As you can see, I got a decent amount of the bottle, about up to here. And the big thing is, I don't need much of this. And you saw how little bit of time. This thing still feels full. Um, let's move back over to the workbench. Well, I'll tell you what. Let's go ahead and undo this here. Now, one of the things you'll notice... When you get this untaped is, well, that is if I get it untaped, there we go, is there'll be a lot of air bubbles in it. Now, if you're using lacquers especially, now if you just put the lid on this and put it up, good chance you're going to have a pressure build up and you may even split the bottle. Um, so it needs to gas out a little bit. It needs to warm up a little bit. If you fill this cold, or, even, or this uh, bottle, even this straw, they are ice cold uh, from the propellant coming out. And by the way, I'm going to go ahead and take this tape back off of this and uh, off the straw. That is if I can get to it. There we go. Um, and you'll see that there's really not... really any there we go just a little bit on the front of the nozzle there not a whole lot uh, just wipe that off and like I said this can still feels pretty full so I didn't get a lot out of it but as you see there's a good bit in the bottle here um, hold on let's get back over to the workbench okay here we are back at the bench and as I said if you I don't know if you can see it with this tinted bottle but there's a little bit of air bubbles in there, and that's still some of the propellant in there. I use an old skewer, and all you need to do is slowly start stirring that a little bit, breaking that up some, so to speak. And with lacquers, again, you really need to do this more. Um, if you do it too fast with lacquers, some lacquers anyway, you'll see where they start to expand a little bit. And with the testers paint, usually I don't let this sit, but maybe an hour or two with the lid off, and then I seal it up. And by the way, if you're thinking, yeah, but does it dry out uh, really quick, or can you use it? When I set this up, when I put the top on it, I'm going to use uh, two or three drops of lacquer thinner. And I mean drops down in there, and just kind of swish it around a little bit. And um, it, it will last a lot longer than you think. Lacquers will last longer than these enamels will. Um, this particular color is for the 32 
the wheels on the 32 Ford, the light blue. And as I was telling you, you can take, like I've already marked on the top of this one, Tester's 1208 light blue, so I know exactly what that one is. And uh, let that gas out for a little bit. And then I'll put the lid on it, and probably about an hour or so, I'll probably actually airbrush that on those little 30-second scale wheels. Um, guys, that's the way I do the decanting. It's pretty simple, but there are some precautions to take. Like I said, let the things gas out a little bit. Uh, and when you seal them up, periodically, if you're not going to use them that often, put a couple more drops. And I do mean drops. Don't put a lot of lacquer thinner or thinner in it, but just a few drops. Um, but like I said, we've got a decent amount and we barely sprayed it. And you can see what it's up to here. Uh, the level is right there. And this is way more than I'm actually going to need for that car, but for those wheels, but that's okay. That's okay. Um, looking good, but that's the way, that's my preferred method for decanting paint. Uh, like I said, the, the other techniques I showed you, and there may be even more out there. Um, if you've got any other ideas on it, uh, let me know. I, I'm always interested. I read all of the comments and uh, try to respond to them all. Um, thanks, guys, so much for watching. I'm glad to share. If you haven't subscribed, go over to that subscribe button. Hit it. Hit that notification bell so you don't miss out on anything. Throw us a thumbs up. Uh, for all of us content creators that, that uh, are on YouTube, that really helps us out. Guys, until next time, thanks a bunch and God bless.